So these are the component sections or parts of the crack sensor. We have the main unit itself, which comes in a box this size, 145 millimeters by 65 millimeters. It's got four access screws and a lid with uh, an O-ring in it. We have an aerial, which comes on, comes either as a, in a five uh, meter lead or a 10 meter lead. We have a temperature sensor. We have a battery, which is a 3.7 volt, 400 milliamp battery. And we have two arms, which you can choose, depending on how, size, how big um, you require, 200 millimeters and 300 millimeters long. Two boots that go over them for uh, weather protection and an arm mount, which either can come as right angled or straight. This is the internals of the crack sensor itself. We have two battery connections. We have the temperature sensor coming in here, the aerial connector. We have two buttons, a reset and a test button. We have an RGB lead in there, a SIM card, which is tucked in the back there, and a SD card. This is the, way, uh, the arm guide in here. Right, the beauty of the crack sensor is you can actually install it yourself within 30 minutes or so. So these are the tools you require. You need a hammer drill of some form if you're drilling into concrete. You need a drill bit, which is around about six millimeters in size. You need some ram plugs. Ram plugs and screws, which we'll supply to you. You need a set of Allen keys and you'll need a sealant of some form to hold the, the temperature sensor in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the concrete. We can supply that to you as well, as well as a screwdriver and a cable tie. So now we're at the installation phase. We're, we're doing this inside to make it a bit easier to film, but and I've already pre-drilled the holes where the crack sensor is going to be located. But the first part of that is to install the arm and insert the arm inside the rubber boot, right to the very end, so you can feel it there. And then insert the arm inside the crack sensor through the grey guide and the yellow guide, right up to this part. Right over, over the top, like so. And then taking a cable tie, just to ensure that it doesn't come off. Just cable tie that, like so. And just remove the excess part of the cable tie. Okay, the next phase of the process is actually to um, place the enclosure and the arm block, this one here, on either side of your crack. We've already pre-drilled this, so we know what the gap is between it. But the whole, the whole point here is to place it on one side, stretch the arm out till it uh, around about half of full scale, and then mark out where you're going to put the crack sensor and the arm block. Please ensure one of the critical things here is, is that if this is, makes it easier if, if this is all on one plane. Okay. So, so now you know where the, where, the, where the crack sensor and the arm block need to be mounted. We now mark the holes and drill those holes. The holes themselves, if they're drilled in concrete, you need to put, put the ram plugs in the holes. That's a six millimeter by 30. And then slot those in and then screw the the enclosure and the arm block to the concrete. Now that the crack sensor is in fact uh, mounted, the next thing to do is stretch out the arm and clamp it in the block like this. And using the Allen key, just tighten them up so the arm is clamped and under tension. The next phase of the process is to mount the aerial in a location where there's a good signal strength. Often the crack, the crack sensors are mounted in areas where there's a bit of uh, shadow, um, RF shadow, 
and we can't get the signal out, so the, the aerial needs to go somewhere where we get a good signal. You can also, this stage, mount the temperature sensor, drilling a, a, a six millimetre hole, about 20 millimetres deep, into the concrete, slide the, slide the sensor in, and then seal it off using the sealant. The aerial comes with a, a, a mounting bracket, which is held by two, again, two ram plugs and a screw. For the sake of the demonstration, we're just using a cardboard box. Once the aerial is mounted on the bridge, or whatever structure you're on, you can then run the cable out and plug it into the crack sensor itself. Doing up the screw. We're now ready to fire up the crack sensor. There is no, there is no switch, so all we can do is plug in the battery itself into one of these connectors. The connectors are the same, there's two of them, so we can actually replace the system with another battery without turning the thing off. The plug is polarised, so it'll only go in one way. Immediately, the lead here will turn on. Push the reset button. We now have to wait around about 30 seconds, maybe a bit longer while the thing powers up, does its checks to make sure it's got things like the SD card and the SIM card and so forth. When the setup is complete, that blue LED will flash green once. So that's, it's done its self checks. The next thing to do is to push the test button. The LED will come on again, turning blue. And then again, after about 30 seconds, it will flash three times. The first flash indicates the status of the arm. The arm is in the correct position. The temperature probe is OK, and the battery is OK as well. The second flash indicates the status of the communications. The SIM card is inserted. We're getting a signal from the network, and the time is being synchronised. The third flash indicates the status of the SD card. There's an SD card inserted and we can read and write data to the, to the card. What's happened now on the third flash, uh, information has been transmitted back to WSP Research and we will get an indicator that we've actually received the message and the unit is uh, operating uh, as designed. Next phase is to close the enclosure up, place the battery over the unit, put on the lid, and do the four screws up. The case is IP65, so it'll, it can reside outside and be rained on without any water getting inside the case, as long as you do the seals up correctly. What also comes with this is a set of written instructions.